Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. I want to talk for a second about the relationship between celiac disease and miscarriage and stillbirth. There's a study that was done a little bit earlier this year that looked at what happens when someone who turns out to have celiac disease, okay, what happens in the years before that when they're trying to get pregnant and have a baby. Uh, essentially what they found was pretty shocking. And they found that in the years before the diagnosis of celiac disease, a woman that ended up having celiac disease had about a 12% um, higher risk of having a miscarriage and about a 62% higher risk of having a stillbirth. But see, the most important thing about what I just said is it happened before she was diagnosed with celiac disease. And that's the thing about celiac disease. The diagnosis of it can sometimes take forever. And here's why. Celiac disease most often, believe it or not, does not create gastrointestinal symptoms. It doesn't create diarrhea and bloating and gas. Very often it creates this kind of stuff. It creates endocrine problems and neurological problems. And that's what's so confusing for a lot of doctors when they're trying to figure out what's going on with someone is they tend to focus only on the GI symptoms when really uh, GI tract as indicating that the person's got celiac disease. Now, once they suspect the person's got celiac disease, now what do they do? Well, they'll usually use a blood test to, to try to identify if they have it. They'll do a tissue transglutaminase antibody test or sometimes an endomesial antibody test or sometimes a gliadin antibody test. And what will happen is, is if one of those tests is not positive, they'll say, oh, well, you don't have celiac disease, you can go ahead and eat gluten. And that's a mistake because celiac disease is not the only kind of gluten sensitivity. It's well established now that there's something called non-celiac gluten sensitivity, non-celiac wheat sensitivity. And that's all just kind of a name game because what it really comes down to is, do you have a problem with wheat or not? And what we know from these recent studies about infertility and miscarriage and stillbirth is that years prior to getting diagnosed with celiac disease, there was a problem. And the person just may not have been diagnosed uh, correctly or maybe they were seeing the wrong person that didn't know what to do. But the problem was there years ahead of the diagnosis. And in fact, I, I read another study that maybe I'll, I'll throw in here as well, is that antibodies that indicate celiac disease are present somewhere between six to eight years before the person actually gets diagnosed with celiac disease. And of course, I want to spend a lot of time telling you about you know, how I have problems with how they uh, diagnose it because the blood tests are cool, but then usually what they'll do is they'll make you do a gluten challenge where you have to eat gluten, which is a terrible thing to do if they think you have a gluten sensitivity, uh, or they'll do like a biopsy. And the thing is, biopsies are great for celiac disease, which is an autoimmune condition, but a lot of people, more people, have non-celiac gluten sensitivity, meaning more people have a problem with gluten that is not celiac than people who have celiac disease. And in my practice, I really don't care what they call it because the issue is you either do or don't have a, a problem with wheat and, I, and you either do or do not have an autoimmune problem because of it. And even though celiac disease is considered an autoimmune condition, it, that can spider web out into lots of other things. We know that people with celiac disease are prone to miscarriage and stillbirth and type 1 diabetes and Hashimoto's and lots of other autoimmune conditions. But here's the thing, people that don't have celiac but have gluten sensitivity, those people have a similar set of problems that they can have as well that can lead to autoimmunity. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to share this because I know there's a lot of women that have trouble getting pregnant and there are people that have miscarriages and people that have uh, stillbirths. And what I want you to know is if that's in your history, and you've had that problem, you ought to be working with someone that understands that celiac disease could be causing that, whether or not you classically fit the definition of celiac disease. It still should be investigated, but hopefully you're working with someone that's very current and understands that, yeah, you know, celiac disease is like, it's, it's like this, you know, uh, a, a poodle is a dog, but not all dogs are poodles. That's kind of the way celiac disease is, right? Is it really the biggest deal that we call it celiac disease, or is it a more important to know whether you have a problem with gluten that's causing this and all the other side effects that are happening. So look, if, you've, if, if unfortunately you've had to deal with miscarriage or stillbirth, make sure your doctor, whoever you're working with, understands this stuff and can properly investigate you for this and then knows what to do about it.